Hello, welcome to this last seminar uh, or webinar of our 2021 series. Let me try to share the screen to get into the, my presentation. Okay, and let me start the presentation. Okay, so welcome again. This is the last webinar of our 2021 series. And today's topic is systematic and rapid model development. I'm going to give the first lecture, which is models, modeling, model-based application, uh, introduction to a systems approach. Let me also first thank our host, the PSC for Speed Thailand team. They have done a wonderful job in organizing the six webinars. And also today, they have also been uh, helping with the, or presenting the problem solution lectures. Today, Ora Koch, the project manager in the Thai, in the Thai office uh, will join me in the problem solution lecture. Just to review, we started on uh, 14th of July with webinar one, which was about sustainable process design in 12 hierarchical steps consisting of a three-stage methodology. That was July 14, 15, and 16, covering synthesis design and innovation. Then webinar two was property estimation. Then webinar three was refrigerant design selection verification. Webinar four was chemical substitution. These were in August. They are specific parts of chemical product design. And then we had the last uh, webinar on 9th September, uh, which was uh, systematic and reliable chemical product design. To finish it all, we are finishing with webinar six with systematic and rapid model development. Just to remind you again that uh, all of the uh, material for the six webinars are going to be available on our <clears throat> website. And from the website, it is possible to go to our YouTube channel to, to see the recorded uh, presentations. And the idea is to subscribe, uh, click on subscribe. You, one enters the YouTube channel and scroll down to see what one would like to view. If one wants uh, not to subscribe, but uh, directly go to our website and download the lecture slides or go directly to the, to the recorded videos, that option is also possible. So the idea of this is uh, that we are providing all this information free of charge is that we would like the PSC community and outside the PSC community to take advantage of the knowledge we have put in there. It can help those who are doing research, maybe with some information they otherwise could not find. It can help the educators uh, to supplement their uh, presentations, uh, lecture material for students, supplement what they learn from the courses with additional information. Industrial people who want to solve problems, there are lots of information here. You're welcome to use them, but if you use them in your presentations, reports, whatever, we would appreciate if you acknowledge our help. So the objective of today's uh, webinar is that uh, we want to give participants a view on various aspects related to model and uh, model modeling in process systems engineering. Model users apply models to perform feasibility analysis of novel processes and product designs to design control operations to assess environmental impact, detect potential hazards or accidents and many more. 
A systems approach helps with model development and application steps, such as definition of modeling objectives, derivation of the model equations representing the system, analysis of the model equations, development of different solution strategies for different modeling objectives, and also application of the developed model. This webinar will cover some basic and advanced process modeling techniques for development and or use different types of models, which you will see in webinar six, that is this webinar, methods for systematic and rapid de model development will be highlighted in terms of modeling concepts, modeling techniques, and application of model-based PSC methods and tools for problem solution. We will use a, a specific modeling tool called MOT that aids in the creation, translation, analysis, and solution of models uh, will be highlighted. And of course, uh, like all the others, a use of systems approach will play an important role. Today's lecture uh, series also includes two invited uh, lectures. The first one is by Professor Jay Lee. He will talk about database modeling, surrogate modeling, and time series data modeling. Professor Jay Lee is from KAIST in Korea. And uh, <clears throat> Professor Fengji Yu for, from Cornell University will talk about deep learning and machine learning based modeling. And then the final uh, lecture is problem solution. And today I will join with Orakoch in the Thai office for this part. Some information about textbooks. There is a lot of uh, books on modeling one could get. Uh, the two that my lecture is based on are uh, these two books. One is Process Modeling and Model Analysis by Hangos and Cameron, and the other one, Product and Process Modeling, a case study approach by Cameron and myself. And as I said, there's a lot of uh, books on modeling one could find. Four that I would just like to highlight are these four that uh, you're welcome to have a look at. So the topics to be covered in this lecture is what is a model? What is modeling and modeling process? Model structure, classification, different applications of model and mod computer-aided modeling framework. So what is a model? According to Minsky, a model M for a system S and an experiment E is editing uh, to, let me just move this a little bit. Anything to which, I will put this in the corner, uh, anything to which M can be applied in order to answer questions about S. What I would say is that in addition to this, I would say model, model is a means of representing reality with virtual reality for a purpose. And we can look at some of the critical issues of modeling. As we said, we want to represent reality with virtual reality for a purpose. So one issue is what is the purpose? What are the system characteristics? And how are they connected? So this purpose and system characteristics are connected to the model form, which is also an important issue. Then the next two issues are solution and data, both needed and available. And how are they connected? The model form defines the solution strategy and therefore the solution. But in order to solve the model equations, we need data. So the data is also connected to the solution. And then the next two are the interpretation and experiments. Interpretation is related to the solution, but in so interpreting the solution, we also need some data. <clears throat> so data is very important and central to all kinds of activities. And at the same time, the data needed and data available have to come from experiments. So experiments are also something. So then I will give you some 
modeling wisdom, not my wisdom, is given by George Box, who says that all models are wrong, some are useful. If you have been watching CNN during the COVID crisis, the CNN medical expert, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, has been uh, citing this statement quite a lot. So model, uh, a definition of model, more practical that I like from Hungus and Cameron book is model, it is a pattern, plan, representation or description designed to show the structure or workings of an object, system or concept. It could also be the study of a miniature of the actual, the model objectives need to be clearly defined. And if we look at this uh, figure, we can see in the top, uh, we can see the reality. And here we see the model, which is a partial representation of the reality. The question is, are we capturing all the important parts, the essential parts that need to be identified? Are we capturing also parts that are not important or parts that are incorrect or something that is non-essential. So it is very important therefore to define what we want in the model. If the idea is to study this part of the system, then this have to be captured. Does this part which we was not needed but we have included affect our model and its performance? Does this part affect our model that we did not need, but we have incorrectly identified? So all these questions can be answered if we define our problem and model objective correctly. So the model objectives need to be very clearly defined. So, what we are talking about then is this virtual reality of the actual system. Some examples of pr process models. Here is a typical chemical process or petrochemical process. If we identify each of the unit operations there, there, I'm not showing all those unit operations in the figure, but let's say some of them, we identify each of them. And then if we have a library, like uh, in a process simulator, we'll have library of unit operations. Then we simply collect those uh, models from the library of unit operation models, configure them as, the, as they're configured in the process, and then we perform mass and energy balance. That's the typical example of process model. A similar one, is a simulation of uh, models for simulation of wastewater treatment facility. The only difference between this and the previous is that the process is different, the models are different, the flow sheets are different. And so the same simulator on the left will not do the simulation for this. So we need another simulator. And this simulator usually is process specific. This is a general simulator that can cover many processes as long as the same models are needed. Usually here, the models could be different. And then we can see that we do have a process. We have a model. Now we want to use this model for a drying operation and control the drying operation. Then we identify all the unit operations and the sequence in which they are operated and then create dynamic models for them and then create a way to use the dynamic model to study the control of this process. So here we need dynamic model, here we need steady state model, but different kinds of steady state. In all cases, we are modeling the mass and energy balance and associated phenomena models. This is another dynamic model for control, but here we are not trying to operate for a specific condition. We are looking for 
how we should control the shutdown of a process. And during shutdown of a process, surge of gases in a compressor can take place and we would like to avoid that. So from a safety point of view, this is also very important in order to be able to model so that we do not have any difficulties. And then an example of multi-scale modeling and also population balance modeling. We have a fed batch metallurgical reactor where different metals will be extracted at different conditions. How should we operate that? What is the population balance of the different kinds of uh, solids that would be formed? All of these can be studied through this kind of model. And then a very interesting one with respect to environment and explosion. If an explosion has occurred and gases have come out through the explosion, what would be the gas cloud and how will it move and what will be its contents? All of these can be studied. So again, in all cases, all are mathematical model, but we are solving different sets of equations for different purposes. So what is modeling? Modeling is related to how to obtain and or develop models. So in that way, modeling uh, models, presenting reality with virtual reality for a purpose. So what you see here are different examples of models. What we need is a good understanding of the system and the model objectives. In PSE or process systems engineering, the core activities of process systems engineering is shown on the left-hand side, uh, the, the column on the left-hand side. And these are five core activities, numerical analysis, computer science, synthesis, design, optimization, synthesis control theory. Why do we need this? The outcome of this is given in the last column, understand behavior of intelligent systems, synthesis of molecules, materials, flow sheets we want for synthesis in de design. We define the optimized product, process allocation, optimization, we give the optimized solution, systems and control theory, we process and plant-wide control, structures and controller design. In order to achieve the outcome on the right-hand side, we need the methods and tools. So these are simulators, synthesis methods, design methods, programming techniques, control techniques, and so on. In all of these, Modeling is a subtopic and plays a very important role. And then we can see for each of those kind of problems that is on the right hand side and the problem that we want to solve is for different systems, which is on the left hand side. How are they connected? If for each of this system, we have all the information we need, we can solve all these problems. But in practical reality, we do not have all the information. And then we develop a model for based on the system and for the purpose that we want to use the model. We solve the model equations, generate the missing data. And then once we have the data, we use the model to solve these problems. So model-based systems needs to have model data, numerical <clears throat> solvers, algorithms, methods, and many more. Examples of model-based systems, process synthesis, process simulator, control monitoring system, planning scheduling, and many more. Note that the role of modeling should not be just to replace experiments, but much more. So what is the modeling process? As we talked about, we have a real world and we want to represent the real world with uh, a virtual world. So we convert the real world into a virtual world through a mathematical problem definition, or you can say a mathematical model. And then the mathematical model need to be solved. And then we need to interpret the solution if it is correct. 
we stop. If we're not, we continue until we have the right model. And in a more expanded manner, we can show that to define the pr uh, problem, modeling problem, we need the problem definition. What is the purpose where we want to solve? What are the controlling factors within the system? That is the important essential parts. What is the problem data? Do we have some data already available? So this defines the problem. Based on this, we construct the model. That means generate the equations representing the system. Then we solve the equations. And then once the solution is obtained, the first verification is to check whether the solution is correct, numerically correct. And then once we have confirmed that, we check whether the model is representing our system in the way we wanted it. If not, we go back and we can change any of the items in the problem definition. So it's an iterative process. It can be very fast, it can be very slow, depending on the person solving, depending on the tools used, depending on the objectives and so on. And what we would like is to, uh, through a systems approach, reduce the time for model development. And reduction of the time for model development also means reduction of time for process product development and faster to market for a product. So system description in characteristics. It is very important to be able to say which is our system or subsystem and what is happening in that subsystem. So in the picture, you see a, a kind of a modular diagram of a, of a process with a distributed system like a furnace, a two-phase system, a one-phase system, a mixer, connecting connection between two operations. And then the figure on the right shows uh, just one minute, I want to check. <clears throat> On the right, uh, we see that uh, we have defined a system and then we define a subsystem and then we define a subsystem. And in each case, the subsystems are smaller than the original system. So we can also uh, do representation like this, that we break down a bigger problem into smaller and smaller until we cannot go further and then define the smallest part and gradually build up from that. So we can decompose into smaller and smaller parts and then we can combine into bigger and bigger parts. And for each of those For each of those uh, systems, we can define a volume that represents that system or subsystem. And then we can say what is happening. Obviously, a volume that represents uh, as a black box means that we don't know anything inside the system. All we want to know is if we give something into the system, what is going to come out. And usually, based on data, we should be able to calculate that. So that is uh, uh, like a black box. But if we say that uh, within the system, uh, it's, uh, for example, a one-phase system like this, everything is perfectly mixed. So <clears throat> there's no concentration of temperature gradient. We do not need, therefore, a distributed system. We can use a lumped model or one, one model representing the whole uh, subsystem. Or we can break it down into two phases. And these two phases are in equilibrium. And we can say each phase is perfectly mixed. So we need equilibrium conditions. We need equation for each phase. And then we can do many more. We can say within each phase, things are not perfectly mixed then we need a distributed model for each phase and so on. And then ultimately, we can say that uh, it's a distributed system, but uh, we have particles and then we need 
population balance kind of model. So depending on uh, what, we, what system we have and how we describe them, the, the system characteristics then will lead us to different kinds of model equations or model forms. <clears throat> and in chemical engineering and related engineering domains, the most important thing is that we actually uh, look, apply conservation of mass, energy, and momentum. So which means that whatever comes into the system and whatever goes out of the system has to be applied and has to satisfy the conservation principles. So then we have one set of equations that represent the con conservation conservation principles, and that we call the balance equations. And then we have constraint equations, like for example, equilibrium between vapor and liquid, conditions for uh, surface temperature, conditions for different uh, operations. And then, so all those conditional equations, we call constraint equations. And then we have a variable theta that is also within the balance equation. <clears throat> that is actually a set of pr properties. And those properties are obtained from constitutive equations or phenomena models. And the important thing with the phenomena model is that the input for phenomena model are intensive variables that can be measured like temperature, pressure, composition, species, and so on. And what we get out are the properties that are conceptual variables, cannot be measured directly, uh, like enthalpy, entropy, fugacity coefficient, and so on. So these are the ones that go in there. And what is the effect of this? We will see very soon. So the model, in most cases, will consist of one or more of these equations. It can be that some cases, the balance equations are not important, so we don't write them, but it will be a combination of these equations. And remember that uh, if we need a property theta, then we only need one value of this property. We don't need multiple values of this property unless it is multiple compounds and things like that. Or let's say for each compound, we need one value because we can use only one value in this equation for each compound. So the constitutive equations, given temperature, pressure, composition, and the species, it will give us the property and it will give us the derivatives. And these derivatives are also very important, which you will see afterwards when we use the, the model in different applications. Because if temperature pressure is changing here, they have to change according to the derivatives here. We cannot arbitrarily change them. And then I want to show you a little bit of this importance of the properties. So this equation here is the mass balance equation for a two-phase flash. We have feed, we have the vapor, and uh, the y, the vapor composition is replaced by the x times the ratio of fugacity of liquid by fugacity of vapor plus the liquid. And then you can see that uh, fugacity L and fugacity V, these are the fugacity of the liquid phase, vapor phase. They are functions of temperature, pressure, and composition of the phase. So we give the temperature, pressure, composition. We get the <coughs> fugacities. And if we are optimizing with respect to temperature, pressure, this operation, we need also the derivatives of the fugacity with, temp with respect to temperature, pressure, composition. So that's the role of the constitutive model. And a specific temperature pressure compound will give a specific fugacity, which will then define what the separation would be. So we cannot arbitrarily put what we want. So different versions of process and or product 
Models are obtained depending on the system definition, model objectives, assumptions, choice of the constitutive models, and so on. And now we can see also in the process <clears throat> life cycle, we need different kinds of models at different stages of the life of a process. In the beginning, the phenomenal models are very important. When we are doing the chemical research, we need to find out qualitatively which path we want to do, which process we want to consider. Then when we are doing engineering calculations, we need quantitatively correct models and we need uh, models where the mass balance is very important, the energy balance is very important because they will give us the cost. And then in order to do the design of the equipments, we need the detailed engineering. And then we need different <clears throat> kinds of model, dynamic model for control and so on. Ultimately, we need um, for production planning and things like that. We need also quantitatively correct model with simple phenomena models rather than um, detailed phenomena models that would be used here. <clears throat> So we can see that uh, at different stages, we can use mechanistic model, fundamental models, first principles models, black box model, gray box model, machine learning based model, depending on what the needs are in the different stages of the life cycle of the process. So they can be simplified, reduced, local, surrogate, hybrid, we will talk about all of these. They can be predictive, they can be correlation. So then <clears throat> as far as classification, we can say models have different modes and I call them modes in terms of mechanistic or empirical, st stochastic or deterministic, lumped or distributed, linear, nonlinear, continuous, discrete, dynamic, steady state. I could write more. And different modes of uh, model give us different types of model equations. Deterministic will be nonlinear algebraic equations, ordinary differential equations, partially differential algebraic equations. Stochastic will give another form of equations. Lumped will be ordinary differential equation. Distributed will be partial differential equation. Linear will be algebraic, linear, linear, uh, ordinary differential equation, continuous, discrete. So we can have different types uh, of model equations. Different types of mod, different types of model equations give us different kinds of problems that we can solve with them. And I'm just showing you for the case of <clears throat> ordinary differential equation, uh, distributed systems and lump systems. And here we can also say algebraic and then nonlinear and algebraic, uh, nonlinear and linear. So one more branch can be shown. And then if we have these, then we know that we have a form mode of model, we have a type of model, we know what kind of system it is. And then we can say, is it simple or complex? Is it single scale or multi-scale? Is it simplification or reduction? Identification or regression? Different kinds of problems, applications that we will have. And I will highlight each of these. So let's take the uh, model structure with a simple example. Let's take a CSTR reactor with a feed. Actually, I want to have two feeds. Uh, single phase, whatever liquid comes in goes out. And we can say that we want to study this and want to study the effect of inlet change, study the dynamic behavior because we want to control the process. Plus minus 10% accuracy is enough. The system description within the volume that we will describe the CSTR we can say that there is a first order reaction, perfect mixing, adiabatic operation, equal inflow outflow, constant properties. Because the properties are constant, we can just calculate the properties and put the values 
So we do not need a constitutive model for those properties. So, but we may still need constitutive equations because there is a reaction. We need the reaction rate. Maybe there is a transfer of heat or mass. We need those. Property relations are not there. Balance volume relations may be needed. Control relations and equipment constraints may be needed. All of these constitutive equations will be needed in addition to the balance equations. And then the condition will be that there is control, there is no equilibrium, but there are defined relations. There is initial condition in the CSTR, there may be boundary conditions. So if we take those uh, description and we write, so first we have the balance equation. The first top equation is the mass balance, then the energy balance. Then we have the constitutive equation for the reaction rate. And then we have the conditional equations, which says that is defines MA is equal to concentration times volume. This is uh, moles per liter. So then moles per liter multiplied by volume gives us moles. And similarly, the enthalpy is a function of specific heat and temperature. Specific heat is fixed, so we uh, do not need a model for specific heat. Similarly, this one, and then the valve function is given. So these are then the conditional equations. So we have the three sets of equations and we have the complete model. Now, I will show that how th from this single model, we can generate other models as model extension, model reuse, and even generation of new models. So we have the CSTR. I just added an extra feed. Then if we take out the reaction equation, we have a mixer. If we add two phases to the CSTR, then we have a two phase reactor and we have an extra product going out. And if we then remove the reaction from the two phase reactor, we have a two phase separator. And if we combine them into a network, we can combine them into many networks and here is one. So what you can see is that once we have these modeling building blocks, we can use those building blocks to generate our network, network model, which is actually uh, operations that require uh, lumped modeling. So, so if we need lumped modeling, this is a good example of lumped modeling, distillation columns or any staged operation is a lumped model. And then we can also combine them in different ways to generate totally new in unit operations as in process intensification. So in principle, three and four could be combined together to be a reactive flash and then reactive flash combined together gives a reactive distillation. Whereas in this case, the reactive stage is at the bottom and after that is non-reactive stages. So this kind of thing can be done by this concept of model extension and model reuse. So now let's say that uh, we have a generic uh, model or a set of model equations where we have an objective function then we have some constraints, process con constraints. Those are the conditional equation. Then we have the process model, equation three. These are the balance equation. Then we have the constitutive equations, property models. And the, then equations five, six are also the constraint equations. That is the conditional equation. And equation seven is a model to generate networks. And then this set of uh, equations can give us or represent any kind of system that we want to represent with models. And the system would be algebraic equations, the differential algebraic equations, partially differential algebraic equations, discrete, and in terms of optimization would relate to LP, NLP, MILP, MINLP, and so on. And there is real variable, integer variable, uh, 
process design variable, which is the actuator, the, <clears throat> the input variables, that is D, theta are the parameters, uh, properties, and X is the process variables. We can solve it in many different ways, direct solution, solve all of them together, decompose, decompose them into different parts and solve them uh, in uh, different parts and hybrid a combination of all of that. So here is an example of the kinds of problems we will solve. Here are the equations. If we only want to solve equation three, it is a process simulation problem. If it is also <clears throat> uh, equations four, six, then it is a product simulator problem. Sorry. If we solve equations one and three, then it is process optimization. And if we solve all the equations together, then it's a very big complex problem. I'm not talking about the solvers here. Uh, this paper uh, gives a very good review of all the different solvers that can be used for different kinds of problems. So if I summarize, we have a system. The system is represented by a model the model needs a solver. And once we solve the model, we have the solution of the system. And then we use that model for different purposes, design, analysis, control of the system. And here is an example that we want to control the process. If we follow the red path, uh, we want to maintain a product specification represented by Y star and the actuator is the steady state uh, corresponding to that Y star. So now if there is a disturbance D, then we go this way. It finds out that Y is not equal to Y star and the error is bigger than what we can accommodate. Then it comes here. The controller then looks at the difference and suggests a change in the actuator and the new actuator comes this way until we have the Y controlled, even though there is a disturbance by changing the actuator. We can also change the set point and it will be the same. If instead of uh, using the real system, we want to use the model, then we follow the blue path. And so the question then is when we use the model, which form of the model should we use? Should we use the simple model, simplest model, or the most complex model? What kind of model? What form of model? Those are the big questions. And the optimizer, so we can solve the problem for controller. We can also solve the problem for optimizer because in optimization, we want to achieve a spe design specification, which is given also by Y star. So Y star in, Control is a control variable in optimization is a design specification. And then we want to change the design variable, which in control is the actuator and in optimization is the design variable. And then once we get the optimized U star and Y star, we want to maintain that operation with a controller. So optimization and control is very much linked but the question is, what kind of model do we use? Do we use dynamic model in all cases or steady state model for optimizer and dynamic model for controller? There are many options and we will see. So let's look at the concept of sim model simplification and linearization. We have the reactor and we have a separator and then we get the product here and the unreacted material goes back. We can take this process and use the models, uh, models in a process simulator and simulate it dynamically, steady state, no problem. If, if the models are there, we can simulate that. So one example of model simplification is that we can play with the variables of the model and make some assumptions so that we can end up with lumped parameters like damp color number and a simple relationship. 
<clears throat> like this or like this, if V, V R K divided by F1 is the damp color number. So the damp color number can be used here as well as here. And what happens, uh, and we will see what happens with, uh, if we have a model like this and we play with this. We can get, taking this uh, equation, damp color, uh, the smallest damp color number can be one and it must be usually bigger than one. As damp color number approaches one, for small disturbance in F1, we get big disturbance in F2. And that is called the snowball effect. Or in reactors, when the conversion is not very high, it is possible to get snowball effect because of this. And if you use this equation and a second order reaction, uh, second order kinetic model rather than first order, it is possible to get when you plot conversion or composition versus damp color number, you can get output multiplicity. So for the same damp color number, you can get two compositions. Which one is correct? It turns out that while this kind of analysis is very important to find out very quickly where problems occur, if we look at it in more detail afterwards, what we will see is that when we use a simulator, it's very difficult to find the other uh, multiple solution. It can be that one is easy to find, but the other one can be very difficult. And that is because lumping and delumping of, of variables into parameters can cause this kind of effects. We can also linearize the model. That means take the Jacobian and uh, take the derivatives and apply Taylor series expansion and get a linearized model where A, B, C are constant. And then for disturbance re, uh, rejection until uh, around a steady state, we can easily use a linearized model rather than a detailed model. So that is simplification and linearization and it is very common practice to use these. A more interesting one is model reduction, where the first I will show is the thermodynamic analysis, where we can take the model and do a thermodynamic analysis to convert this set of equations into a smaller set of equations. So we manipulate the thermodynamics of the equation of state. And here we will have actually NC plus one equations because uh, we can replace y in this equation and we can we don't need z and since we have replaced y we will only have this equation so there is nc plus one equation and then this nc plus one equation after some manipulations can result in three equations it doesn't matter how many compounds are there whether there are 10 compounds or 20 compounds these three equations can be used to represent this multi-component system. So that's model reduction. We are reducing the number of equations. We are not simplifying the equations. This will give exactly the correct solution. But find the a way that we have a smaller set of equations to solve. And more details of this can be found in this paper. <clears throat> Another example is also model reduction and reducing the number of equations in a different way. And this is taken from a very nice example, a very old paper, 1968, a fluidized bed catalytic reactor represented by these four equations. If we look at the eigenvalues, we would see that two of them are fast, two of them are slow. So we can group the fast eigenvalue equations together, the slow ones together, and then we have a solution of two steady state model, uh, two algebraic equations and two dynamic model. And this kind of analysis also is well-known model reduction. And sometimes this kind of system 
where this is uh, one scale and this one scale represent a multi-scale and can also give multiple steady states, as you can see here. This is a well-known example for these. So models can give multiple solutions, especially if you reduce models like this, but they are real solutions, they are not parametric problems. Another multi-scale uh, problem is shown here. This is a polymerization reactor. And within that, there are uh, particles that are formed. And within the particles, there are particle sc uh, scale. Uh, this, this is a swarm of particle. This is one particle. And then one particle is on the, has a sub part, which is on a surface active site. So we can go from here to here to here to here with respect to different scales uh, in terms of the volume. <clears throat> and also we need a population balance. But all of it together, averaged out, is what we need here. So that kind of modeling also is very important and also plays a very important role in process and product design as Charpentier has said, first identify the desired end use properties of microstructured product at the small scale and subsequently to control product quality and production efficiency by multiplying the microscopic formation at the process scale leading not only to novel product, but also to less waste and <clears throat> energy, uh, lower energy consumption. Model identification, what we say is that since uh, it is very almost impossible to get a first principles model that does not need any parameters, the only one is the universal gas law, but that is valid only for some systems. For any realistic systems, we need to have a parameter. If we put a parameter, then this is the missing link. We just put a parameter here and we can perform the miracle. So to do a property calculation, I'm showing here, we have a molecular structure, which is represented by its critical properties. And these critical properties help us to generate the PVT behavior of the molecular structure. In order to generate the PVT behavior, we need some parameters. If we have more than one molecule, we also need some mixture parameters. So these two sets of parameters needs to be estimated. And that's a parameter estimation problem. We have the process model within it, which we have the constitutive model and the constitutive model has parameters. And these parameters need to be fitted. So <clears throat> we are minimizing at least squares or some other error mechanism. The experiment is done on the process level. So we need the process model. And then we compare the measured values against the process predicted values for different sets of parameters in the constitutive model until our error convergence is satisfied. And that can be set up as an optimization problem. So that is a typical regression problem, parameter estimation problem. And I will skip this. The only thing to point out is that these are the parameters, these are the groups. The group contributions are C. We need to fit the C. And the mixture parameters are the tau. We need to fix those through regression. Another one is identification. And I will show with the framework. I don't know why it has removed my video. Uh, framework for the system development of constitutive models within a generic process model. And I will give the example of a crystallized crystallization, uh, crystallization like this, a batch crystallization. We have balance equation represented by population balance, overall mass balance, energy balance, jacket cooling, constitutive model supersaturation, nucleation, crystal growth rate. So then 
for a model-based approach, we need data to fit the kinetic models for nucleation and crystal growth. We apply process analytical technology to measure the data, <coughs> convert the data from the measured values to the values that we can use in the model in terms of temperature, concentration, crystal size distribution. And then we identify. So here is a question of identifying the behavior of the crystallizer in terms of ability to give a crystal size distribution, as well as finding the parameters, kinetic parameters for nucleation and growth. We have done a lot of uh, kinetic model parameter estimations. Here are some examples, industrial problems, uh, thermal treatment of gas streams, kinetic model for bio in technology, pharmacokinetics, protein uptake, fragrance aerosol distribution, uh, model discrimination. So I've given the references, one can go to each of them to get these. I've talked about model simplification reduction. Here I would just mention local model and surrogate. Uh, Professor Jay Lee is going to talk about also surrogate models, so you will get more information from him. The only thing I would say is that model, local model, surrogate model are similar, except that in surrogate model, one replaces this model totally, whereas in local model, one does not replace. One has a, um, one, uh, one uh, loop where the local model is used and another loop where the rigorous model is used. And uh, these were done in the 1980s and 90s, and now the surrogate model represents the total model. The only thing I would say is that before <clears throat> cubic equations of state and combined equation of state GE models, where the host model and local model were correlations and derivatives. Now, I would suggest that PC SAFT, SAFT, COSMO could be the host model and surrogate could be these because these can be solved now very fast. Whichever are used, remember that the derivatives must not be forgotten, they need to be included. With respect to the modeling framework, we are talking about a process model, which is mathematical model. And then we, a, a computer aided system should be able to derive the model equations, translate, analyze the model equations, solve the model equations, and then help in different steps of the modeling task. So that is the idea of the computer aided modeling framework to reduce the time of the iterative model development steps. All of these will be highlighted during the problem solution. What you can see here is that the steps that the human should do and the steps, the green ones, that the computer can do much faster than the human. So by doing that, a large percentage of time can be solved, can be saved. And once we have the model objective or model object, we can use it in different applications. And I talked about uh, model reuse. Here is a template that can be used for model reuse. We have developed the model as we would develop. We will use the model solution steps. I will uh, demonstrate that in the problem solution, but we can take any model, put it into this model template, which will then guide us to generate various versions of that model and combine them into networks and so on. So a model template is what we have developed for such purposes. <clears throat> also the equations that I showed, the gen generic equations one to seven, if for each of those type of equations, a library of models are kept or created, then we have a vast source of models and different combinations of models will allow us to solve very wide range of problems. I will skip this uh, for time and summarize. Models, modeling, and model-based applications are important in, 
enabling uh, that enables uh, us to face current and future challenges in product process engineering. They improve understanding of the domain system, help to predict and optimize product process behavior, help to reduce the number of resource demanding experiments, deliver truly innovative solutions if properly employed. Remember, however, that it is important to note that the role of modeling should not be to just replace experiments. Also, what we will see is that uh, the three plenary speakers at ESCAPE 31 this year, Professor Reclitis, Professor Mark Olivier Coppens, and Professor Pistikopoulos, all in their different lectures, identified as research challenges, modeling and model-based systems reduce development time, reduce cost, shorten development time. So modeling and model-based systems are very important. Thank you very much for your attention. I will take questions after the presentations by Professor J. Lee and Professor Fengi Yu. And I will stop here now.